in Parsha Vayahi, the last chapter of Genesis, at the end of Yaakov's life, he decides to bless all of his sons. But before he starts blessing the 12 tribes, he begins with the grandchildren, the children of Yosef, Menashe and Ephraim. Now it's a very famous scene because as we know, Yosef brings his two sons to see his father. At this point, Yaakov is blind and can barely see and he crosses his arm. So instead of blessing Menashe first with his right hand, who's the firstborn, he crosses them and blesses Ephraim. And he says, may your descendants be like Ephraim and Menashe. So the first question is, why? Why would Yaakov switch his hands with these two sons? Did he not learn from all the other episodes leading up to this point how terrible sibling rivalry could be? Why does he have to again have a younger brother be blessed first, insinuating, and of course that he explains that the younger son is going to be greater than the older son. So Rabbi Jonathan Sachs in his book, Covenant in Conversation, has a beautiful answer to this question. And for him, the answer lies in the names of Ephraim and Menashe. When Yosef names Menashe, he says, may I, um, for, Menashe means to forget, like may I forget all of my troubles and my past and my father's household. He wants to forget his life leading up to at becoming a slave in Egypt. It's just too painful for him to relive what had happened. And for Yosef, it was, I just want to start over, have a clean slate, and I'm just going to focus on my life in Egypt. But by the time Menashe is born, we see the metamorphosis that Yosef goes through. Because with Ephraim, he's basically thanking God that he has blessed him to be fruitful. But Ephraim means to, to be fruitful. Um, in the land of his affliction, that even though he was sent down as a slave to Egypt, he's been able to be fruitful and to be prosperous in this land that caused him harm to begin with. Now, Rabbi Sachs makes an amazing uh, revelation where he says that this is what immigrants go through. Usually first generation of immigrants want to forget where they've come from. But by the second generation, they're yearning for their past. But for Yosef, this all happened in a short period of time. Now, what I find amazing is that for Yosef, and this is really the message I, that Rabbi Sachs believed Yaakov wanted all of the future generations to see, is that you shouldn't try and forget your past. That's not the healthy way to handle things. Kind of like how Simba tried to forget Pride Rock when he ran away. The goal is to wherever you are, keep going. Want to be prosperous. Want to make a new life. Want to have many descendants. Because one day you will return or you will have a new you will have a second chance. And when that happens, you need descendants to go back. Descendants who are gonna to wanna to connect. You are the link to the past, but you're also the link to the future. And that's the beauty of what Ephraim and Menashe mean. And of course, we also know that they're the first brothers to not have a sibling rivalry. So every Friday night, when the father blesses his boys and says, may you be like Ephraim and Menashe, it's twofold. It's made no matter what your future entails. Always strive to have brotherly love. Always strive to just be able to be prosperous in any environment. Don't forget your past. Strive and shoot for greatness always, wherever you are. And don't be jealous if somebody else is more successful than you. Be the brothers that get along. Be the brothers that no matter where they're coming from in the link in our history, you're moving in the same direction forward. Shabbat Shalom from Maui.